guys, thank you so, so much for 100 subscribers. That is such a huge milestone for me, and I just appreciate you guys so much. Guys, if you have not subscribed already, please consider subscribing. There's no reason not to, and you're completely welcome to subscribe to this channel. So on this special day, me and my dad went spearfishing at a new spot, and I'm really excited to show you guys. It had some monster cole. These cole were the biggest cole I've ever seen on Oahu, and I even got a 9-inch cole, which is a very decent size for Oahu. This spot also has many big uhu, mu, to'au, roy, and basically all the sorts of fish that you want to spear. It was an amazing day. We got 16 fish, and I'm so excited to share it with you guys. So you can see here I'm hunting this cole. It's a pretty decent sized one and honestly these fish are super easy. If you spook them and they'll come right back to you. And I look under the shelf, don't see much. I do another dive right here and that's when I see the cole and honestly it's pretty easy to lay out a shot on them. They're not easily spooked and even if you spook them, they're able to come right back. So you see there, I just get them. Uh, I thought I got a stone shot, but then I can see them spinning around and still nice sized fish and we're able to put them in the bag. In all my excitement, I forgot to bring the dive clip and dive buoy, so we were just using our dive bag to put all our fish in just to keep away from sharks because I have been spooked every once in a while with my fish on my belt and that's why I got a dive buoy, but then I forgot it, so the bag will have to do just fine. The most important thing about spear fishing is patience. You see, I'm just waiting for the fish to do the perfect turn. And uh, yeah, as long as you have enough patience, the fish aren't really gonna go anywhere and you can get that nice shot that you're trying to get. And honestly, all it takes is practice. If you don't feel comfortable in your first dive, go back up to the surface, take a lot of deep breaths, and then uh, go right back down and see if you can find that fish again. Because most likely, they're gonna be in the same spot. They're very curious creatures and they wanna know what you are. They wanna know why you're in the ocean. So that's exactly what I did here. It will line up and get that shot that I'm looking for on the second dive when I felt more comfortable. Even though I'm only in shallow water, I still wanted to make sure that I was getting good shots on these fish because it's just less painful for the fish. You can see here that fish is just dead. I got a nice stone shot on him. So here I'm diving and I spot this decent sized manini over in the distance. So I dive down. I haven't shot a manini in quite a while since my last catch and cook. So I want to give it a try, see if I can cook them a little bit better than last time because last time the fillets were terrible. So I'm just waiting for the perfect shot and he gives it to me and I shoot a little bit too high up on the back and that's why it's spinning out of control and all I can think about is the reef sharks in the area they can probably already smell this fish from where they're staying so I just lift them up out of the water as best as I could and yeah I signal to my dad that I got a fish and bring him back to the boat so here I spot a nice sized cole there's actually a ton in the area so this is a really cool spot we just found it and I spot the biggest one single them out and get the shot on them right here uh, he turns and then I'm able to shoot him and a pretty nice size cole. You don't really see cole this large on the side of the Oahu or really in any spot in Oahu. So it's really a blessing to find these fish and these quantities at this size. I don't think anyone's ever discovered this spot. So I'm really stoked that we're able to come here and harvest these fish for dinner. So here I spot this moray eel. He's been stalking us the entire trip. I spotted him at least three times swimming behind us because they tend to like to grab a free meal and if I was a moray, I'd like to do the same. You don't really want to get too close though because I have been bit by a moray eel much larger than this one and I had to spend two months in recovery and two days in the hospital with intensive surgery work. So if you see one of these guys, leave them alone. You do not want to get bits in. Here I spot my first aliihi. I'm pretty sure that's what they're called, but it's a saber tooth squirrel fish ducking in and out of this hole. So I wait for him to turn and sure enough he does and I get a spear on him and I was super stoked because this is my first one ever and I've heard they're amazing fried. So I was just super stoked to finally get one of these fish. Uh, really happy with that. And let me tell you, this guy was amazing. So stick to the end to find out what he tasted like. Here's a nice dive. I go down, I spot this group of cole, but I see a pretty large one and I try and single him out. And I'm just watching him and he's so curious. He comes right over and I'm able to get a nice shot on him right there. And I thought he was stoned because he didn't move, but then he started swimming around. So I knew I didn't get a stone shot, but still super sick to get these fish. Honestly, always a blessing. All right, so this shot is humiliating and embarrassing, even for me to watch again. I miss a point blank shot on a pretty decent sized cole, and ugh, this is just excruciating. Look at that. 
that was point blank and I still missed but got to keep your head up there's more fish in the area and who knows maybe we'll grow up to be even bigger and hopefully we'll see him in the future so here's the eel again stalking us once more he swam into this little crevice and I honestly do not want any part with him I want to keep all my fish and my fingers so I'm just gonna stay a good distance from him on this dive my dad spotted this one and I go down and I crawl over to him and get a nice shot pretty quickly on this fish wasn't down too long and yeah it's super cool but this guy was pretty large for his size and I couldn't wait to cook them up because this is the most cole that I've ever seen in one spot on Oahu. Me and my dad are getting super stoked. The dinner is going to be amazing tonight. And yeah, it's super fun spearfishing with him, just spending time with him. He's taught me a lot about spearfishing and how to stay under the bottom and be calm. It's really fun spearfishing with my dad. He's taught me a lot about spearfishing and tips and tricks to land more fish. And I don't think I could have done it without them, so super fun. I of this nice shell that I grabbed out, uh, super pretty. They're called cowrie shells. It had a snail in it, so I couldn't keep it, but super cool to find these. All right, guys, so this dive is in a pure example of what happens when you celebrate too early. I spot this nice cole, and I thought that I got a stone shot on him right here because he didn't really move that much, so I throw out a shaka, kind of stoked. And then I pull him out and I realize that I shot him way too high up on the head and he starts moving and I realize that this was not a perfect shot and right here he tears off and uh, I was pretty mad. He goes under this coral. So I dive down to see if I can get him again and that's when he just swims farther in and I'm like, well, what can I do? It's kind of on me not getting a good shot, but there will be more. Here's another good example of being patient. I dive down. And the first dive, I spooked them a little bit, so I go back up. I don't want to spook them too much to where they go into the coral. So that's when I come back up to the surface and then do a second drop, and that's where I capitalize on it. So here I'm just being patient, waiting for that fish to give me a good shot. And that's exactly what it does. I crawl up to it to close some distance. And uh, yeah, I just take the shot of the cole, and it was a pretty nice size one for the area and I was super stoked. While I was taking my fish to the boat, my dad had shot another fish, so we're just reeling in fish one by one, switching off the spear gun together because I forgot my three prongs, so we're just switching off the spear gun one by one. Here's a nice fish. I'm just laying on the bottom, being patient, waiting for that perfect opportunity, and I spot the cole behind this wrasse, and I get him. Unfortunately, the spear got lodged pretty well deep into the coral, which I try to avoid as much as I can, but I was able to get it out eventually, and yeah, Super nice fish to eat. Probably one of my favorite fried fish. If you know how to do it right, these things are amazing. I recommend spearing them. They're super good. That basically wraps up the video. I'm gonna transition it to the catch and cook portion. I hope you enjoyed this video so far. And if you have, please consider leaving a like and commenting what I should do next. All right guys, we're back. So uh, we got 13 cole, one manini, and then two of these alihi right here, these red ones. I've never had one before. I've heard they're amazing fries, so I'm gonna go ahead, give it a try. So I'm gonna be teaching you guys how I like to fry my cole the best way ever. Fry them in a wok like this, and we're gonna be breading them. We're gonna put them in some of this egg, and then we're gonna put some in uh, flour, and then we're just gonna set them right here till first. So pretty simple, but first off, we're gonna season them. We're gonna be using some pepper, and then salt, and last but not least, I have this Old Bay seasoning. I usually like to use Cajun seasoning, but yet again, I am all out of Cajun seasoning, so just use Old Bay. Uh, if you have Hawaiian rock salt, use that instead. It's definitely a lot better. So we're gonna take the fish over here, and I'm just going to put pepper, salt. All right, now what we're gonna do is just heat up our wok. I like to use 7.5 on uh, this little tiny like induction cook top thing but honestly it's just your preference so we're just gonna wait for that to heat up and then after that we'll take the fish put it in the egg put it in the flour and then we're just gonna set it right into the oil also guys make sure that whenever you're cooking fish uh, in oil uh, to make sure that it's dry because water and oil can light fires and it can become pretty dangerous pretty quick all the dogs can smell it already all right guys so the oil is ready so we're gonna take the fish and put it in this egg let that soak and we're going to bread it with the flour after that 
Alright, you're good to go. So you're gonna let these sit for about three to four minutes on each side. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip these after your three or four minutes. All right guys, now for the finishing touches, I just like to add shoyu on top of your fried fish. This gives it some nice flavor. Uh, All right, so I just got a little piece of the aliihi or uh, saber tooth squirrel and I honestly don't know what to expect, so I'm gonna go ahead and try it. Mmm, it's really good. It's actually really good and there's a lot a lot more meat on it than uh, kole. That's excellent. It's really good. Kind of, I honestly kind of taste similar to kole uh, itself. Bon appetit. Excellent as well. Uh, I don't know which one I like better because they taste pretty similar. Although there are definitely some differences in the in the taste, but this squirrel fish is actually really good. A lot better than I thought it would be. So the cool thing about these kole is that they're actually sometimes kept as aquarium fishes. And I didn't know that until recently, but it's crazy. They're like pretty expensive. They're like 68 or $70 per fish. Which is kind of insane because we have a lot here in Hawaii. But uh, they taste really good. And they may seem like they're small, but these are actually like full, full grown adult sized kole. We just found this new spot and I guess there's never been fishermen there. So like the kole had, had time to grow. But they're a delicacy in Hawaii. Another cool thing about these fish is that they're only supposed to be eaten by the royalty uh, back in the old Hawaiian time, which is kind of a kind of an honor to be eating these fish. Yeah, they taste amazing. Uh, the squirrel fish taste amazing. Although if I were to see another one, I'd probably let it slide just because they have so many gnarly spikes on them. And if you, if you ever catch one, it's gonna be delicious, but just be prepared to like have a few extra bandages in your cabinet because I got poked quite a few times and my dad actually got poked pretty badly from them. But yeah, they're definitely really delicious. Definitely recommend them. But if you see these kole around, make sure you take a few home. And of course the best part is the tail. It's like a Hawaiian potato chip. But anyways, I'm gonna enjoy this meal, give some to my family, and I hope to see you on our next episode.